Was she white? Was she black? No one knew, but she sure as hell was pink. Fast forward to present day, it's hard to imagine the pop rock singer being an R&B diva and singing TLC tunes, but it happened. And although that part of her discography and image has been buried away, it was the catalyst for her long-standing career. Pink was originally signed to a record deal as a member of the R&B girl group Choice in 1996. Eventually, LA Reid dropped the girl group in favor of signing Pink as a solo artist. He saw the most potential in her out of all of the girls. She would continue down the path of rhythm and blues for the beginning of her solo career. Her debut single There You Go arrived in 2000. It was a successful top 10 hit that sonically took inspiration from TLC and Destiny's Child, who were the zeitgeist of R&B during that time. Questions about her race instantly came into play and it was quite the headline for her debut era. She was commonly mistaken to be a light-skinned black woman or biracial woman. And whether intentional or not, she didn't do anything to calm the rumors but rather fuel them, almost playing up her alleged racial ambiguity because she knew the buzz it would bring. I'm like, whatever, like, I'm a mutt, we all are, we all came from the same place, God, and <laughs> that's how I explain it, we're all pink on the inside, whatever you want to call it, I don't care, if you respect me, I respect you, and if you're ignorant, then I don't have anything to do with you, basically. I mean, a lot of people come up to me, they're like, what's your music, like, Portishead kind of thing, and then, or else they've seen my, they've heard the song on the radio first, and they're like, she's not white, she's not white, but people need to realize you don't have to be anything to be anything, you just... It comes from your experiences, it comes from where you've been, what you've been taught, and what you've decided to go with and learn. Her debut album, Can't Take Me Home, was a full dive into R&B pop. It had every iconic R&B producer and writer backing it, from Babyface to Tricky Stewart. The album had two more successful singles, Most Girls and You Make Me Sick, which were both top 40 hits. The album itself saw a fair amount of prosperity and broke ground for Pink, selling over 2 million copies and establishing her as an artist to keep an eye on. Although the album was a groundbreaker for Pink, she wasn't necessarily a big fan of her own material, and it's clear she had no emotional attachment to it, as she was quoted saying, There was no blood, sweat, or tears on my first album, and no emotional exchange between me and the musicians. R&B is on a conveyor belt. So it's clear her label had a specific route they wanted her to take for her career. But that career trajectory was definitely not something she wanted for herself. Her first huge breakout moment within pop culture was being featured on the now classic remake of Lady Marmalade, alongside Christina Aguilera, Maya, and Lil' Kim. It won her her first Grammy and became her first number one single. Still, she felt like the real her wasn't being seen enough. She sought after Linda Perry, a singer-songwriter who she had admired as a kid, to work on her next album. The album would feature deeply personal material that was miles ahead of her debut. She covered topics from her childhood to her troubled coming-of-age years. Her label executive, L.A. Reid, wasn't convinced with the new material and thought she would lose her fan base, but Pink convinced him, and in 2001, Misunderstood arrived and Blackpink left. She kicked out this era with Get the Party Started, which was a perfect introduction to showcasing a new side of herself. She was brutally honest with this album, so much so that she even had the guts to call out her label executive in her international chart-topping smash, Don't Let Me Get Me, going on to say, the album had a total of four singles, all of which were internationally successful. She was reaping the benefits of showing her authentic self to the full extent. The album sold over 10 million copies and today is still her best-selling album. And with the major success that came with this album, she was instantly a pop rock girl and her time as an R&B diva was mostly forgotten and she's never quite reverted back to it. Although something like this today would undoubtedly cause controversy, I do think it's important to mention that Pink did in fact have an authentic love for R&B and she's been very open about her versatility and influences. And based on her comments about Can't Take Me Home and that era within her career, it seems like she didn't have much control over her image or how she marketed herself until her second album. Can't Take Me Home definitely sounds like it was engineered to be a popular album instead of one that's long-standing and substantive. As stated by MTV, although she joked around with the mixed race conversations, Pink never actually tried to prove she wasn't who she said she was. She was more concerned about pointing out that she was a girl who could do it all. Ultimately, she was the one who defied her label by pivoting her sound in an effort to be true to herself. And that authenticity has been continually triumphant. And I can agree with that. Pink definitely did one of the quickest turnarounds that pop music has ever seen. 
after she was allowed to fully embrace herself instead of what her label wanted her to be. She barely even performed songs from that album and stated it was very much marketing. No Creative Control Pink left us with a few earworms, but Authentic Pink left us with some timeless songs. I'm an R&B singer, also I'm a gospel singer, I'm a punk rock singer and a pop singer and a soul singer. All of that is me, she told Variety in 2019. Those influences definitely continue to bleed through her music today.